Do you want to create a successful business and preserve your energy? Make more money while you stay true to your values? Know how to reclaim your calm in times of stress? Enjoy a balance between the time you give your career, your family, and yourself without feeling guilty? Welcome to the Reclaim Your Balance podcast. I'm Dr. Laura Schwent, longtime dentist and work-life balance coach. In each episode, we'll explore ways to feel empowered about the time you devote to your career, your family, and yourself. Develop tools to help you reclaim your calm in times of stress. And purposely make more balanced daily decisions based on your core values. Join me as I hack the world of work-life balance and bring to you extraordinary professional women who are at the forefront of living their best lives in balance and harmony as guests to constantly inspire you to reclaim your balance. You are the CEO of your life. Now become the boss of your balance. Hello, Balance Bosses. I am so happy to be here today with Melissa Turner, aka The Tooth Girl on Instagram, which is the cutest handle ever. Thanks so much for being here, Melissa. Thank you, Laura. No, The Teeth Girl was already taken, so I had to go singular with it. I'm like, okay, this this will work, right? It's adorable. I love it. Well, You're going to come on today and talk to us about so many important topics. But first, I want to just introduce you. You are a dental hygienist. You started out as an assistant Mm -hmm. and then moved on to dental hygiene. But you're so much more than that. So I'm going to run down a few, just a few highlights of who you are, okay? Mm -hmm. So you are the co-creator of the Oral Health United, Chief Hygiene Officer of Celerant Consulting, you're a nationally published author and speaker, co-founder of the National Mobile and Teledentistry Conference and Alliance, creator, of, this is one I'm really excited to just learn about, creator of the iHeart Dentistry Network, co-host of Dentistry Gone Wild podcast, and uh, founding co-host of the Evolve 2021 Dental Conference, which is coming up just shortly, which we'll be talking about. So that's just a few of the things that um, the few of the hats that you wear and the wealth and knowledge that you bring today. So welcome. I'm super excited to have you talk to our audience about balance, workplace wellness, um, the, the eve of teledentistry and how women and millennials are really stepping up into the dental world today. So welcome and thanks for being here. Thank you. It's an honor. And it's an honor to be in front of this amazing group of women and those who identify as women, right? Like, it's just an honor to be here. So thank you. You're welcome. So I'd love to just go into a little bit of your history, like how you got into the dental world. What was it that that brought you here and led you to all of these passions now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I grew up in a small town in Pennsylvania. Um, A lot of Amish around me, very conservative, very sheltered life, right? I know some of us have been there. Um, And really, I knew from an early age, I knew I was always the different one in my community. And I knew I would, would not necessarily be there for the rest of my life, like the rest of my family and friends. And so from an early age, I have always um, identified as being something different, And so what that means now in dentistry is I've been able to take a step back and just, um, you know, see the need in dentistry to be more inclusive, to to have a work-life balance, if that's even a thing. And so my bottom line through everything I'm doing, I mean, all of those little, little things in the bio that you read are great, but they all have an underlying. Um, kind of backbone. And it's really to make dentistry a better experience for not only the patient, but the provider as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so I started in, in dentistry as an assistant when I was 19. And I like to joke, you know, like many of us, we've spent our entire adult life in people's mouths, right? <laughs> I mean, what do you think of it that way? 
I'd rather it be at this end than the other end, but right, right. it would be has different things, different things to say about that. Um, but and then then I moved on to hygiene. Um, but for the last six years, I have been uh, my my real job per se as a stay at home mom. And um, my journey as as a mother has been quite a, a difficult one. A lot of postpartum depression in the beginning, and and just just not sure how I was going to see another day. Mm -hmm. So everything that I'm doing now is to help support. Um, I, I call them the under recognized um, dental professionals and people that make up our industry. Because if I can help be a voice for those who have walked in my shoes or, or for those who are struggling in our industry, that that's what I'm going to do. That's such a privilege. So um, that that's the underlying backbone, Laura, of of everything that I'm doing. And um, for about for about ten years, I uh, I I followed my husband and his educational journey around around the world. Mm -hmm. And so he finally got to where he wanted. And now he says, Melissa, he says the next ten years are yours. So oh. do what you want with it. Go full force. And so here I am. That that's what's going on. That's that's a great story. I love that, and I love how you're bringing a part of your life that was challenging and turning it into helping others. That's mm -hmm. one of the biggest gifts I think that any person can give because knowing that and having that understanding, you just don't even know how much that can help someone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm all about story and it's, it's, it's often easy to judge other people, even your friends. Right. Um, but the, what I always come back to is we each have our own stories and we're each dealing with things. We have our joys, we have our successes and we have our struggles. And so just to be able to share the, 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 the dirty parts of our lives, you know, share the secrets, share the hardships. That's when we can truly connect. And, and I have a feeling that you and, and those who are listening, you know, would, would identify with that as well. Right. Because it's not an easy journey being in the dental field is is challenging work as it is it's challenging to get there it's challenging to operate in that and um and then we have life too we have the other things that are happening in our lives and so um how did you navigate the postpartum depression and did you did you have did you have people that you were you counted on or how did you get through that no so um, the story goes, we were, we were living here in Portland, Oregon, and, um, uh, my husband's journey, educational journey had to take us to Northern Minnesota for about four years. What, you know, what I was about seven months pregnant when we moved to Northern Minnesota, we had never been there before. Didn't know a soul, didn't even have a house when we lived there or when we arrived there. Um, and so that, you know, environment is a big thing for me. And so I was in a house, you know, luckily we found a house that we liked. Um, but I was in a house for a year with us with a hard pregnancy and then a hard year after and no support. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, my life partner, my husband, he, he did what he could. Um, but we didn't have family or friends. So I just kind of grit my teeth and, uh, and grinned and bared it, you know? And I remember thinking, um, I remember thinking, man, like waking up one day and thinking, man, this can't get any worse than it is. And then I woke up the next day and the same thing happened and it got worse and worse and worse. And so I wish I had a, you know, a success story of like, okay, I had this great support system. I had this, uh, you know, great therapist. I had this, you know, I had this amazing healing story, but I don't because I'm still on that journey of coming out of it. Mm -hmm. um, I do remember um, at her one year birthday, at Maggie's one year birthday, mm -hmm. I remember this weight being lifted um, and saying, whew, I made it, right? Mm -hmm. And it was just this weight. And then I got pregnant again. I was like, oh my gosh, like what's going on? <laughs> But um, it's just been a journey. And one of the hardest, I mean, we talk about work-life balance, Laura, but one of the hardest things was um, this didn't cause the depression, but this was definitely an aid, you know, in, in how I felt. How the heck am I going to have a clinical 
dental job and be the primary caregiver to my children, right? Mm -hmm. You know, in a small town, um, there, you know, I, I know women and parents, we, we struggle with this, especially with a clinical job. And especially if you have to be the dentist and the practice owner. I mean, I can't even imagine, right? Mm -hmm. I can't even imagine the weight on your shoulders with that, mm -hmm. um, being a woman, being a parent, and then having those things too. It's, it's, it's a hard industry, isn't it? It is. It's really hard. And, you know, just finding care for your for your kids, um, navigating if you're nursing and trying to do that during a clin busy clinical day. Mm -hmm. um, if your child gets sick, you know, or you need to go get them. Yeah. You know, it's not like you have patience. It's not like you can just get up and leave. And so there is a lot that goes into it that um, is different from other um, non-clinical jobs, mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah, yeah. And that's that's one of my goals, too. If we can make dentistry as a whole more flexible, mm -hmm. I'm talking like down to the clinical workday. If we can make that more flexible, it's going to have positive ramifications for the practice owner, for the team, for you and me as we sit here talking about this, and then for the patient, too. And so flexible can mean many things, but um, that's that's kind of a direction that I'm going these days. We've got to make it more flexible because it's 2021, right? Like we've got to, we live off of this thing and, yes. um, and yes. you know, chat like we're doing and, and we're quarantined even just the same, right? So um, it's got to be more flexible. So tell me, um, this just segues perfectly into teledentistry and mobile dentistry, doesn't it? Because there, there is so much flexibility that can be brought to dental practice with these. Is that where the, where your interest in this for, first started? It did, yeah. Um, so when I was in Minnesota, the only job that I could find was volunteering at a um, nonprofit mobile dental program. Okay. And shortly thereafter, I, I started to run the program. Um, and it was a great work from home job and I could get out and get clinical, you know, once in a while when I could find somebody to watch the kids. Um, but what that made me realize was, and we had implemented teledentistry too over that time, but, and what that made me realize was, holy cow, mobile healthcare delivery and telehealth is not just for the public health arena. Mm -hmm. It is for all of us, it is for the stay at home parent and the work from home parent. It is for all of us. And I, you know, this was years ago before the shutdown and boy, have we learned our lesson, right? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> had we had all of this implemented before COVID, had the majority of dental practices had this, then it would have been like a little hiccup. A little hiccup, yeah. I was up, I mean, right when in, in March, right when, dental practices were, you know, forced to close their, their doors. I, I was in tears all day long because I was getting calls from, from practice owners who, who knew something about teledentistry, knew I was connected. And the, the only thing I could tell them was, yes, this is going to help you. This is the only answer we have right now in a time when there are no other answers. And it was, it's, it's, it was fun to see. I mean, the fun in, in quotation marks, right? It was right. fun to see it take off, but it was painful just the same because the struggles that we went through as an industry and as practice owners and business owners, you know, that was really tough to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So you have a big conference coming up called Evolve 2021. You want to tell us a little bit about that and and what is happening there and where you see the future of teledentistry and mobile dentistry going? Yeah. yeah. So um, a couple years ago, I found my BFF and my partner in crime. And her name is Sonia Dunbar. She's the geriatric tooth fairy. Um, she's a hygienist. She's a powerhouse. And a couple years ago, we realized we had been on these two separate trajectories, but realized they really aligned. And so we we got to work um, forming and planning um, the National Mobile and Teledentistry Conference. And the first one, our inaugural one, happened in February, like right before the shutdown, probably a week before the shutdown. Wow. And we were happy. Yeah, we were happy at that point if we would have gotten, you know, 100 people together in a room just chatting, right? And 
we sold out and we sold out again and we sold out again and again. And we were like this, we knew this was a, a big community and a growing community. Um, but then COVID hit too. And then we realized, holy cow, this is, like I said, an answer when there are no answers. And so we have our next, um, our next conference coming up just in about a month. And it's on March 4th through 6th, and we're calling it Evolve 2021. Um, and just like last year, it's a hybrid event. So for those who feel safe coming, maybe if you're vaccinated or you feel safe coming at a conference, you're welcome to come. We have um, pandemic protocol in place, right? It's not fun, but we're going to do it. We're wearing masks, temperature checks, six feet, you know, the whole shebang. Um, and, and you could also sign up virtually to attend as well. And then... Oh, Laura, we are super excited about this. This is an, a, a special add-on this year. Um, so this year, our conference is partnering with the Denobi Awards. Um, I don't know if you've heard about the Denobi Awards. I've just been seeing these all over the place, so I'd love to know more. Yay! Tell us. So the Denobi Awards is an, a brand new industry-wide awards program. Um and it's it's to help celebrate the outstanding humans that make up dentistry. So for the last couple of months, we've had nominations rolling in. And th this program is outside of mobile and tele-dentistry. It's for everyone, right? We've had nominations rolling in. Anybody can nominate. Anybody can win. We're talking educators, salespeople, brand leaders. You don't have to be a dental clinician. Mm -hmm. So most what we've seen is most of the awards programs that are out there already are geared specifically towards dentists or hygienists or a certain role or a certain age group, even, you know, like, oh, you've done this amount of amazing things in your life. Now you have an award, right? But yep. we want to celebrate everyone no matter where they are. And so, so we're thrilled. We're absolutely thrilled to be partnering with the Denobi Awards this year. So on Saturday evening at the conference, it's basically basically going to be the Dental Oscars. We're going to get dressed to the nines and there'll be 10 Denobi Awards given out. Um, there's a, a team, a dental team award that will be given out. And those nominations are still going on now for that award. That's the COVID-19 Community Support Award. So if you know a dental team who really did a out. Um, amazing things during the shutdown. Those are the ones we're looking for um, to, to give the award to. And then the marquee award, the annual, the best of the best award is called the Dr. Lou Schumann um, Denobi Pinnacle Achievement Award. So I don't know if you know Lou, Dr. Lou Schumann, um, but he has done amazing things in dentistry. And he's the type of person who always celebrates other people, but really get celebrated and so we're excited to give him that initial the the initial award this year and then going on um year after year uh we'll give the honor to somebody else for that award too so we're just we're just excited to be with people even if the denobi awards weren't happening even if evolve 2021 didn't happen like goodness we just want to be with people right <laughs> just right. It sounds like a great conference. And I love the fact that you're, you're the pandemic protocol in place and the virtual part of it. So it really opens the door for anyone that wants to attend and learn more about teledentistry and mobile dentistry. And where do you see this going in our future now? You know, obviously COVID gave us the good push, right, to, to start implementing this. But what 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 is your vision for this in, in the future as far as not only for patients, but for practitioners as well as to how that can enhance their lives. Yeah, it it is really the future. I mean, you say, how can it impact the future? But it is the future. I mean, so mobile dentistry and teledentistry, I always say they go together like peanut butter and jelly. But the fact is, um, telehealth is basically the newest way of delivering care. So mm -hmm. When I say mobile dentistry or mobile healthcare, it always includes the tele aspect of it, right? Because what better way to get to communicate with your patient than right here? Yep. Um, so where is this going in the future? It is the future. What, what I know for sure is that the dental practice of the future 
will be a fixed dental practice, a traditional dental practice, Mm -hmm. but it's going to have that telehealth arm into the community. It's going to have that um, mobile arm into the workplace down the street, into the university down the street, into maybe the nursing home down the street or the school. And so that's the future. And it's important to understand that when what I've seen is that when practice owners and dental professionals start to think outside of their traditional four walls, Mm -hmm. they get so excited and they realize, oh my gosh, we could do anything really. So what we've seen is, um, you know, if you have a traditional practice where you're looking maybe to expand or purchase a second practice or, um, you know, build on or something like that, you don't need to do that. You You don't need to take that huge overhead on all you need to do is start taking your care to the patient mm-hmm. and that will allow you to expand the practice. So that's one of the, the, you know, bottom line profit builders that, that we preach with mobile and tele-dentistry because I mean, can you imagine, can you imagine how your no-show rates decrease when you take the care to the patient? Right. Mm-hmm. I remember, I remember in the dental practice, just like crossing my fingers, holding my breath, hoping that that like all day, full, full day patient comes in. So we can, you know, do the full mouth reconstruction and then they don't show up. And then what do you do? Right. Right. But if you can actually do that full mouth reconstruction at the patient's house, I mean, we might not be there yet technologically wise. And we might need some more AI and things like that, but you can do full comprehensive dentistry out of a, out of a pimped out dental dam. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can take that care. You can do Invisalign out of a dental van and take it to the patient's house. And we're seeing this already. And we're seeing large um, DSO type organizations taking care into Nike headquarters and, and Amazon headquarters and residential towers. And those are mobile only. Um, they don't even have fixed practices, many of them. Wow. But they're taking pre- preventive and restorative care into workplaces. And so it is the future. I mean, it's it's already here. It's just a matter of trying to educate the dental community to adopt it faster. <laughs> yes. yes. Mm-hmm. Well, and what a wonderful thing because it really does, like you said, it, it expands your practice without all of the other things, but also too brings goodwill. I mean, as far mm-hmm. as taking care of people and making it easy for them. I mean, there's so many people that have a difficult time maybe getting to the dentist and we can get that barrier, whether it be because of work, they can't get out of work, whether it be a mobility issue, any of that. And I know that especially with COVID right now, our immune system is on everybody's mind and and dentistry is a huge piece of that. So we can't let people you know, skip their six month recall anymore. It's just, it's critical that they be seen. So, and if you think about it too, one of the um, surprising things that has come out of the shutdown is that mobile dentistry is quite frankly, probably safer Mm -hmm. than a a traditional way of doing things simply because, I mean, if you think about it, you go to the grocery store, how many people are wearing their masks wrong and like touching them. And like, wouldn't you rather have a trained healthcare professional who's trained in OSHA infection control? Wouldn't you rather them be going out into the community than having hordes of patients come into your dental practice? I mean, even if you just think of it that way, it's, it's got to be safer <laughs> to have us going out to them than everybody just coming to us and who knows what they're doing on the way. Right. Right. That's a very good point. Well, and I think too, it does it, it offers options for, for professionals as far as how they practice, how much they practice, where they practice from. Um, so it, it can, it can bring life balance. Like for, for you, when you were raising little, little humans, mm-hmm. to be able to do that from home or to be able to do it part time, it's just another option, isn't it? It is. And when, when we, so in that nonprofit program that I ran, when we implemented teledentistry, we we worked with a lot of volunteers, right? But as soon as we implemented teledentistry and announced it within a week, I would, I, I, I got so many calls from, from professionals in different types of situations that wanted to still do dentistry, but didn't know how, right? So there was a mom who had just had a baby and she was a dentist and she said, I'm going crazy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this newborn is crazy. I need something to distract myself. I want to still do dentistry. 
can I do talent industry? And we were like, sure, we'll put you to work. We had somebody who just had, you know, a hand surgery and needed to be out for six to eight weeks, couldn't do clinical, put them to work. And there was even someone who, who each winter um, from Minnesota, they snowbirded in Florida. And they were like, I still want to do dentistry when I'm in Florida, when I'm down there on the beach, right? And like, so they could do teledentistry. And so it goes back to what you and I were talking about. Mm -hmm. It's work-life balance, making dentistry more flexible. Mm -hmm. And teledentistry is huge in that. But then mobile is too. I mean, they go together hand in hand. It's all about making it more flexible so that we can breathe. Yes, yes. So we can continue to help, but not deplete ourselves right yes amen and that's just a a perfect segue to um i want to hear about your your new oral health united your your and your iheart dentistry network tell me about this because this is just this is fascinating sure so oral health united um has been in the works for years and it's been this high level imaginative like big idea for years And um, what happened was over the shutdown, we realized that there were a lot of resources that needed to be um, built and made and so that we could have answers. And so we formed Oral Health United, which is really a coalition of industry brands and dental professionals who are helping to get our frontline workers back to work right now. Mm -hmm. But the bigger picture is that we want to bring a better tomorrow for dentistry. And so the idea is if we can align ourselves with these industry brands who are doing good things, who are right on, and if we can all start to, you know, speak that same language, Mm -hmm. then it will trickle down to the dental professionals and to the the patients. So that's Oral Health United. And there's an amazing Facebook group. We have some regional Facebook groups going on. Um, The COVID-19 Dental Discussion Group is a Facebook group. Um, Mm -hmm. That's our hub. Mm -hmm. And so it's the idea is, you know, have transparent conversations, you know, we we can agree to disagree, you know, can live in in harmony together, even if one person might love the idea of a vaccine and somebody else doesn't. Right. It's all about creating safe space to dialogue. Mm -hmm. Um, Now, on a separate, unrelated, but kind of related note uh, for about four years now, um, I have been running a Facebook group called iHeart Mobile Dentistry. And that was really the beginning of this whole mobile and teledentistry movement. Um, And what I wanted to, my goal was always to expand that brand to iHeart Dentistry. And so I'm thrilled over the next couple of weeks, we're going to be launching 30 to 40 new groups across social media, not just Facebook. And these groups are going to be specifically geared towards under-recognized groups in dentistry. So we think about all these dental professionals that we have, and we're all different, right? Mm -hmm. But one thing we have in common is that we're all dental professionals. But what we need to realize is that our differences make up um, the community and we need to celebrate them. Mm -hmm. So some of the Facebook groups that we have, um, we have one LGBTQ plus dental professionals. We have one vegan dental professionals, spiritual dental professionals, military dental professionals, BIPOC. We have parent dental professionals, hard of hearing dental professionals, because we're all hard of hearing. <laughs> what? <laughs> so it's, it's my goal that we will begin to understand that dentistry is made up of melting pot, salad bowl, whatever you want to call it, whatever the correct terminology these these days is, um, but to celebrate these differences, because if we can celebrate them, if we can be happier and healthier, then it's our patients are going to feel that too. And that's the bottom line, right? We, we all want to help our patients. And so if we can get there ourselves, then hopefully they can too. Great. I love that because dentistry can be a very lonely profession. Mm-hmm. You can feel very isolated. Yes. And you can start to think that you're the only one. And yes. so by doing this, you're really highlighting that we, you know, that there are all sorts of you out there, right? And we have a common thread, not just dentistry, but some of these other areas. And um, it just fosters better relationships, both professionally, but like you said, it spills over to our patients. Mm-hmm. And home life too. <laughs> 
It really does. And I think, I think with, um, you know, right now we're seeing a lot of changes. Oh, dudes, yay. We're seeing a lot of changes in dentistry right now, even without COVID. Um, so we're seeing more females graduate from dental school than now, right? And so add that to an already female majority industry, we're going to start to see some some tweaks and some changes down the road. We're mm-hmm. seeing the millennials come, the rise of the workforce, right? We're now coming, we embrace difference and we embrace convenience and, and that kind of thing. And then we're also seeing what technology can do. I mean, one little change in, in uh, technology can, you know, completely change the industry. And, and that's where we are right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's, it's almost like we're at this point where we just got to embrace it all. We just, for, for the dental practices and the dental professionals that want to be successful in the future, you just got to embrace it right now and just got to do it and just run with it right. um, where we are, you know, more yes. than ever before. Yeah. It's an exciting time. It really is. And, and with every, every challenge comes opportunities. If you put those opportunity goggles on, right. And just, and just really explore those opportunities. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see that, you know, the, the higher percentage of women and the millennials bring such a, a wealth of knowledge. <laughs> That's one way to put it. <laughs> I mean, seriously. <laughs> now, they'll, you know, for, for a person like me, they may have to go a little slower and explain things a few more times, but a wealth of knowledge. And it's just, it's going to explode. Like you say, it's going to explode to a completely different profession. Mm-hmm. And I think it's time. It's mm-hmm. time we, we, we explore that. So that's exactly right. And I don't know about you, Laura, but even, even from day one in dentistry, I just felt like I couldn't relate to it. It just wasn't relevant. It was like, hmm, it's old school. It's just like, I don't understand. Like, And to this day, like 16 years later, it's still like, it is not relevant to me. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that's just because of who I am. I'm a millennial. I'm a female. I don't, I don't know. But what I know is that if it's not relevant to me, it's not going to be relevant to the patients, right? So if we're trying to talk to our patients and bring more patients in and care for them, we've got to start to speak their language. And we are not right now. There's a few pockets that are. But majority in, in dentistry, we're not speaking their language. I mean, we're still sending mailers to people's houses and using fax machines, right? Like, no offense, but good Lord, like it is time to just take a big leap forward and and really connect with our patients. Right, right. I remember the time, you know, where the big deal was going to electric charts, you know, electronic charting. And, um, you know, that, that right now, we're way beyond that. We're... <laughs> So, yeah, that's a very good point. We do have to meet, make it relevant and meet people where they want to be right now. Mm -hmm. And they want to be more technologically involved, more convenience and and things have to be focused on those patients and and the health and well-being of our teams as well. Mm -hmm. So speaking of health and well-being, I do want to talk a little bit about your backyard. (laughs) Because, you know, I'm vegan. And so I absolutely love the fact that you are creating a 100% edible backyard. Tell me about that. Yeah. So we were joking earlier that, you know, I don't have I don't have any hobbies right now. Like I have all these books I want to read. My hobbies are like eating dinner in front of Netflix, right? While I'm falling asleep. Like <laughs> all that happens at the same time. I, um, I have that hobby too. <laughs> um and then and then gardening. And it it goes back. I mean, I'm I'm such a stereotypical millennial. Like I don't want to have anything to do with my childhood really. Like I don't want to be my childhood, but I want to connect with it as much as possible. And so growing up on farmland and growing up with a garden and like being one with nature and tree hugging and forest bathing, you know, that's a huge part of me, but I live in downtown Portland. So I have like a 50 by 50 square foot plot in my backyard. I'm thankful I have a backyard, right? Right. Um, 
But my, my dream has always been to have an edible backyard. And so um, entirely edible. And I didn't even know it was a thing until I started researching a couple of years back. And it is a thing. Um, and so I felt supported there. And now I'm just going to run with it. And so I'm probably probably about 75% there. Um, Got to figure out something to do with the grass situation and um, a few things like that. There are some plants that are still here when we moved in a couple of years ago that I still need to figure out if they're edible, right? right. And find a reliable source for that. <laughs> yes. yes. Um, but it, there's there's nothing more exciting to me than watching plants grow and having them bear fruit and then calling them my babies and then eating them. And like, that's kind of messed up, but like, <laughs> But I want to nourish you. you. You nourish them, they nourish you, right? That's right. I mean, tomato season, you should you should visit me during tomato season. I am in my glory, right? <laughs> Salsa and sauce and you name it, right? Yes. Oh, and I bet that's fun for your kids because they can go out to the backyard and have a snack mm -hmm. and know that it's okay, right? They do it. They love it. And um, it's, it's, it brings me joy, right? They'll just go out there and munch on some celery or some oregano or, you know, it changes every year based on their taste buds, what they can handle that year. But strawberries, oh my, they just, they go nuts. Yeah. I love that. I, I love that. You know that that brings you joy and it's good for your health. It's good for the environment. Um, and it, it's just a way to bring more balance to your life as well. Yes. So I don't want to, you know, the one thing is I don't want people to think that I, I have a good balance because I don't right now. That's why we're talking, right? Because <laughs> it's like, how do I balance all this? How do I refine what I have? And how do I, you know, make more impactful moves instead of adding to my task list? Like, what can I do that's more impactful, you know, that I'm already doing? You know, it's, it's, it's refining is what it is. It really is. Yeah. Well, you know, balance is the long game. We have, it ebbs and flows. And, um, you know, I think that that's, that's something that a lot of people miss that idea. And they think that, oh, if I'm, if I'm out of balance, then that's it forever. Well, no, the, the key with balance is knowing, recognizing when you're out of balance and having those things that help bring you back into balance. Mm -hmm. So the fact that you recognize that, you know, there's things that you want to bring, you want to improve the world, impact the world, and yet also make sure you're taking care of you. So, you know, your edible backyard is one way to do that. I think that's beautiful. Yeah. And, you know, one of the other things that we have kind of cooking on the back burner right now, we haven't announced it yet, and I can only give you some clues, but Sonia and I are big into women empowerment, empowerment, big into wellness, and we want to help progress this within the dental community and within the um, female community. And so later this year, we'll be hosting a small intimate event, um, but it will all be all be about rejuvenation. Women, you bring your best friend, you know, it, you take the time to find and try to find that balance or, you know, take one step closer to that balance. And so that'll be later this year and we're going to be announcing it soon. So um, we hope to see you there. Definitely, Laura, but uh, maybe maybe some of the others as well. But it'll be great because it's you bring your best friend and so you don't have to do it alone, which right. is really scary, right? Yeah, well, <laughs> it, it can be, but it's also a great way to foster relationship with your best friend, intentional relationship with your best friend, which is um, one of the tenets of, of balance is having those relationships that are important to you and fostering them. So awesome. All right. Well, we know we can find you on Instagram at the tooth girl, right? That's right. And you're still doing Dentistry Gone Wild podcast. Is that still every Monday with Sonia? Monday. Yep, that's right. That's right. If you want to laugh, she makes me laugh all day long. So if you want to laugh, come listen to us. She's amazing. Absolutely a beautiful human being. So it's, it's so fun that you guys are together because you um, both bring a wealth of knowledge and passion and somewhat different but related aspects of dentistry and and um bravo to you guys for working together to create all of this wonder i mean it's just beautiful thank you i, I feel like so many times we feel like we have to do things alone when collaboration when we can just get together and 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 join each other's journeys and i think that's that's a secret sauce 
to surviving in 2021 dentistry and wanting to get things done is really joining forces together and networking and stuff like that. Right, right. And so with the upcoming conference, people can still register. Is that correct? That's right. We have a couple, we have a couple, just a couple seats left. I mean, not many at all for in-person virtual mm-hmm. seats. There's no limit on that. So you can be there in your pajamas. Um, if you purchase a ticket to the conference, then the Denobi Awards is, is included in that already. Or you could just come to the Denobi Awards. That will be for free virtually, or you can attend in person if you feel comfortable. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's it's going to be an amazing time. Yeah, we can't wait to see everybody. Fantastic. So I will make sure all the links to finding all that information are in the comments below for everybody and um, so that they can find out more about this and reach out to you. And I know, too, um, I'll put your um, contact information for LinkedIn on there because you have um, some other information there. But um, anything else that we did not touch on today? I know I, I, I had this feeling that are you working on a book right now? I did just release a book. I mean, I'm always working on, on a book, aren't we all, right? <laughs> but we did just release a book um, about mobile and teledentistry. It's called An Introduction to Modern Mobile and Teledentistry. Okay. Um, so that's, that. yeah, that that just released a couple, couple months ago, I believe. So Congratulations. Now, can you find that on Amazon or mm-hmm. where? Yep, okay. Amazon. Yeah, um, you can just Google my name or Amazon. Put it in the search box, or um, mm-hmm. or if you go to um, any of my brand websites, there are links to to that. So the conference website, you'll be able to navigate there, or just just message me on Facebook or Instagram, and we'll we'll get you in the right direction. Excellent. I'll make sure and get a link to that as well. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much. I enjoyed this conversation. I I want to learn more about all that you do. And I want to celebrate that you are really making a difference, really making an impact in the world. So Mm -hmm. uh, thank you for, for what you do and all that you bring and um, let's move dentistry into 2021. Right. Yes. And Laura, thank you so much for taking a stand and, and doing what you're doing. You know, we, we just met not too long ago at the Jumpstart conference, but I, I immediately was like, oh my gosh, I love you. you know, <laughs> it was based on what you're doing. So thank you for being a strong presence and for being a support to those of us that need it and um, just being amazing. So thank you. You're welcome. Awesome. All right. Well, thanks everybody for being here. Thanks for the comments. And um, you can always watch on the replay too. So we'll make sure and keep that in the group and you can find it on YouTube. So Thank you so much, Melissa. We will be talking more to you, I know, in the future. Thank you. Bye, everybody. All right. Bye. You are the CEO of your life. Now become the boss of your balance.